Good morning, good morning. Welcome to another beautiful morning. We are on day 29 of this parenting challenge. I cannot believe how quickly it is coming to a close. Uh, for today, I wanted to talk about big emotions because I know that there's a lot of families that I work with who've got kids who've got these big emotions and they have a hard time managing them. And it could be negative emotions like the big upsets and the anger and the sadness and all of those types of things, but also even positive emotions like when we're super excited I don't know if your kids are ever like so excited and you're like dude just calm down right those can be really hard for a lot of our kids to manage and and these kids often become very distressed right e even with simple things like self-care tasks if you're trying to get them to brush their teeth or comb their hair can be really hard or they're running and crashing into things or they need to spin right they've got all of these sorts of big emotions that they need to deal with and it kind of comes out behaviorally like that or they're crashing into people um they're interrupting all the time maybe they have difficulties with rigidities right they they if you change any routines or anything like that or transitioning away from well video games is a whole other issue but if they're transitioning away from one activity to another those types of things can be really hard it, it can affect their peer relationships. It affects us as well. And they've got these huge roller coaster emotions and we're just at a loss. What are we gonna do, right? You gotta calm down. When kids can't manage their big emotions, they get stressed out, right? And if they're stressed out over time long enough, it can really lead to anxiety and depression. So when you gotta know, these typically, um, even though they know they need to calm down, they don't have confidence that they can. And if they don't have confidence that they can, it's gonna be even harder for them to be able to, right? Now, typical emotion regulation strategies puts a lot of pressure on kids, right? But the problem is their brain just isn't set up to be able to handle especially really powerful emotions. It can't handle the emotional brain. Even with adults, and I've talked about this before, the emotional brain is stronger than our cognitive brain knowing that we need to calm down, right? And so that's why there's just a whole host of problems that comes when we try and try and try and we're not able to work. Um, you know, and even if we have kids who are really gritty, those gritty kids, we're always talking about um, growth mindset and, and perseverance and all of these things. Those kids who do seem gritty, it often leads to, leads to perfectionism, to anxiety. As adults, they might become workaholics because I can do it. I can do it myself. But then at what cost? They're, they're, they're at work all the time doing it, doing it. When they do experience failure, they're hitting the bottom so much harder and they're feeling that anxiety so much more. So we really need to self help support our kids with this emotion regulation. And a lot of it we do know if we set up the right experiences can help. And part of those experiences is setting up the right environment. And the environment piece, I mean, if you've tried to do anything like, let's say, lose weight, right? You are most successful when you set up the environment to be successful, meaning you get rid of all the junk, right? Anything that's really tempting for you. You fill your fridge with all the fruits and vegetables and you put them all at eye level, right? All of those things. When you set up the environment, you're more successful. And same thing with kids. They've shown, they've tried lots of different ways to combat obesity in the United States. They've done lots of studies just because this obesity is on the rise and they've done study after study following different food guides and different um, physical activities. And, and the number one thing that actually helped get kids more active was just putting um, a hopscotch in the hallway of schools. So they changed the environment rather than trying to change the kids. And part of this environment is us. So the key to being able to handle big emotions is what's called co-regulation. I was gonna do a little demonstration, I forgot to bring my water, but think of a, a water glass, okay? And essentially, it's, it needs to always be filled, and part of it is filled by kids, and part of it is filled by adults. And this is essentially their ability to regulate their emotions and to self-regulate. Now as babies, that glass is empty. They really can't do anything. They'll cry, so there's just a little bit. They'll cry to get their needs met, but we pretty much have to address every need that that child has, right? As they get older, kids are able to more and more start doing things, but we still need to top up that glass. Now as teenagers, you know, we would expect them to be almost full, but as teenagers, it's actually, it actually dips. So we need to fill up that glass still. 
And we're expecting our kids to do it themselves, but we need to be able to do that. And so I'll have some different graphics and pictures to be able to show you. So it's easy to get caught up when we're expecting kids to fill their glass the whole way to be able to control themselves and their emotions. That can be really tricky when they only have this much in there to be able to do it. They only have that many skills. So uh, the, the big thing, it comes down to this co-regulation. But we got to think about when I'm happy and I'm having a great day, it doesn't matter if my kids are screaming or yelling or anything like that. I go with the flow. It's not a big deal to me. I can just let it you know, go off, roll off my back. But if I'm stressed, holy smokes, my reaction is very, very different to kids, right? So how I react to my kids really isn't about their behavior. It's all about me. And so I hear parents, they come in and they're like, oh, my kids just make me so mad. And I remember as my little one would say, I remember teaching her this when she was little, but she says it back, you were only, you were the only person responsible for how you feel. That's a lot of power other people would have over you to make them be able to control how you feel, right? So how we react as parents to our kids' behavior is really about us rather than about their behavior. So whatever is going on for us really changes how we perceive kids' behaviors. So for example, kid, parents will bring their kids into my office, right? And the kids might be rolling onto the ground and actually I have a super soft carpet and kids love getting down there and rubbing the carpet. So they might be rolling their eyes. My teenagers might be on their phone and you can see the parents just getting irritated and irritated and they're telling their kids just sit properly and, bah, 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 and they're getting angry with their kids and they're trying to correct their kids behavior right so and I see these families just getting upset and the anger ruling well I'm still in the office and I'm not getting angry right I actually see a lot of the kids it's quite funny right when they're just sliding down the couch and I'm like oh I must be really boring it here bud and parents are you know beside themselves that their child is acting this way and I'm like oh my gosh that's a cue to me that I'm being super boring but I see these incredible insightful kids who are super funny and I get to laugh every day rather than get angry so it's not about their behavior right because it's the exact same behavior me and their parents are seeing it it's how we are perceiving that behavior and how we are re reacting to the behavior and how we react is based on us what's going on for us right we react to our kids on our own stuff, based on our stuff. So we need to respond rather than react, respond to what our kids need. And I've talked a lot about what's going on for behavior. So for today, it's really about us being good detectives, taking a step back from our kids and actually looking inward to us. What is going on for us? What is, you know, what's going on in our life? And you know, you are the expert on your life, right? If there's stress or anxiety or sadness or just overwhelm, right? Or guilt or shame or whatever is going on for you, it is affecting how you interact with your kids and your perception of your kids. And the only way to really address what's going on for us is to take care of ourselves. And we've heard this all before, but it is really true. And I've seen the effects. I've, even though I'm at the cabin, I've had a really rough week because I've been on my computer day and night. I haven't had a lot of opportunities to spend with my kids. I haven't been able to go outside to the lake. I didn't go on the water at all. And I'm stressed and my kids are fighting and I'm getting upset. It was actually, it was funny yesterday. I was talking about teaching our kids the art of appreciation. And my kids are like, yeah, okay, mom, we'll work on that. But when are you going to start doing your own parenting things, right? From this parenting challenge. So I know I got to go back and I know it's been a really stressful time for me. And, and I see the effects of that and it's just burning me out. And so we need to take a step back and, and how we can't care for our kids and do the things that we want to do as a parent if we are struggling ourselves. It's that whole mask analogy from, you know, in, in the airplane. We have to put our own gas masks on or air masks before we can put them on our kids because otherwise we're going to pass out, right? We're not going to have enough oxygen to breathe ourselves. We're going to pass out and we're never going to be able to help our kids anyways. So that's really what the point is today is about self-care and I have that first hand knowledge guys and, it, and I'm sure you do too. It really makes a big difference on our own health and our whole family's health. So I know as soon as I'm done here and done this 30 days, I'm going back to the beginning and I'm going to work slowly on all of these things and self-care is going to be a big part of that. So for today, I want you to reflect about what's going on for you and I want you, even if it's just one small thing, this one small thing that you can do for yourself. So go have a wonderful day. 
If you are lucky enough to have your kids back in school, oh my gosh, take the whole day and do a whole day of self pampering care. But if not, just one small thing that you can do for yourself. And if you are getting stressed out with your kids, that's okay. Take a step back for yourself, give yourself some space and figure out what it is you need first. And then you're able to give to your kids. Go have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll actually be tying all of this together. Take care.